fatty acids are essential nutrients for brain function and longevity. But how do fatty acids even make their way into the brain? Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia Shelton, lead medical communicator for Tahiro. And let's take a look at this article here on Tahiro's website about how fatty acids get access to brain tissue. So at first, this might sort of seem like a silly question. Don't nutrients just go from the blood to the cells that they're serving? Well, in most of the body, it is actually a pretty simple process. But specifically in the brain, we have the structure known as the blood-brain barrier. And it actually keeps a lot of substances from the blood from entering into brain tissue at all. So a lot of the nutrients that you eat, supplements that you take, actually never even make their way from the blood to the brain tissue at all because of the blood-brain barrier. So it is something that we want to understand how substances get across it. Um, so what is this blood-brain barrier? Well, it's actually a difference in the structure of the blood vessel walls inside the brain. So in most of the body, in the very tiniest blood vessels, the capillaries, there are these tiny little spaces in the walls of the capillaries. So in between the cells that make up the wall, little tiny spaces. And that means the fluid from the blood can get out of those spaces, right? The capillaries are leaky. The fluid leaks out through the little spaces, circulates around the cells of the tissues, and those cells have access to anything that happens to be in the fluid of the blood, any kind of nutrients, any substances that are in there, the cells have access to that. That's how it works in most of the body. Pretty simple. But that actually wouldn't be a really great idea in the central nervous system, so the brain and spinal cord. And that's because the neurons, the cells of the brain and spinal cord, are communicating with each other using chemicals, right, neurotransmitters. And if whatever happened to be in the fluid of the blood, any kind of chemicals that happened to be there could just circulate around those cells, it could disrupt their ability to communicate with each other, which would have a negative impact on brain function. And the type of chemicals that are in that fluid are changing all the time, right? So we want to keep tight control over the fluid that's circulating around those cells in order to allow them to communicate with each other in these really complex and delicate ways. So in order to keep control of what's in that fluid, instead of having leaky capillaries with little spaces in between the cells, instead in the brain, we have cells that are stuck really tightly together. So now instead of a leaky wall, we have a really solid wall that fluid can't make its way through. Okay, wait a minute. Brain cells still need access to nutrients right? We know that they need to get nutrients somehow. For example, we know that fatty acids are extremely important for brain function, right? They're important for keeping cell membranes fluid, allowing them to function well. They're important as signaling molecules. They're important for producing neurotransmitters, which are those chemicals that the neurons are using for communication. Right? So we know that fatty acids are essential. And of course, there are other essential nutrients too. So there has to be a way that fatty acids can make their way across the blood-brain barrier. It actually turns out there are two ways, right? Two different ways that nutrients from the blood are able to gain access to the brain. And one of those ways is through transport proteins. So there are fatty acid transport proteins and there are specific transport proteins for other nutrients as well. And these proteins are located in the walls, right? That are the membranes of the cells that line the walls of the blood vessels. Right, so we have specific proteins and they're looking for a particular nutrient. Each protein is looking for one particular nutrient. When it finds that nutrient in the blood, it takes it up, brings it through the cell and gives it to the brain, right? Puts it in the fluid around the brain cells. And so in this way, specifically nutrients that are helpful, beneficial for brain function, necessary for the functioning of those cells, those nutrients are able to get across while anything else that happens to be in the fluid of the blood doesn't make it across, right? It doesn't have a specific transport protein. And we actually know that the fatty acid transport proteins really like uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids like omega-3s, omega-5s, omega-6s. They show a preference for these types of fatty acids. And it's probably because these are such beneficial compounds. They help to make sure the brain cells are able to function really well. And so the transport proteins specifically select these and give them to the brain. So that's one way. And then for fatty molecules specifically, right, fats specifically, there's also a process called transcytosis that can allow them to access the brain. So in this process, a little microscopic kind of globule of fat, right, a little like particle of fat, is able to fuse with the cell membrane of that cell that's lining the blood vessel wall. Cell membranes are made up of fat. So if you have a little glob of a similar enough fat, it's able to just kind of 
fuse right there with that membrane and then it can get through into the cell, it can come out the other side in a similar way and in that way gain access to brain tissue. So this doesn't work for a lot of nutrients that are water soluble, things like amino acids. Um, however, for fatty acids, transcytosis is a process that can also allow those nutrients to access brain tissue. And both of these mechanisms help to explain why nanoparticles of fatty acids are better able to enter into brain tissue to cross the blood-brain barrier than other formulations of fatty acids. So a nanoparticle is very, very tiny. That gives it better access to a transport protein, or rather it gives the transport protein better access to the fatty acid. When fats, fat molecules travel in water, they tend to kind of clump together normally. And a big clump of fatty acids, it's hard for a transport protein to kind of get access to the fatty acids inside of there in order to bring them across. Whereas a nanoparticle, because it's a very tiny particle, the transport protein is more easily able to get access to that bumps up against the transport protein and it's able to be carried through and across into the brain tissue. And transcytosis also occurs more easily with nanoparticles. So a small particle is better able to fuse with that biological membrane and a nanoparticle is specifically engineered to be able to cross these membranes easily. So the fatty acid inside is actually surrounded by a shell of a particular type of fatty acid molecule that easily fuses with cell membranes and that allows whatever is inside the nanoparticle to be much better able to cross the blood-brain barrier and gain access to brain tissue. Um, so both of these, these reasons help to explain why nanoparticles of omega-5 fatty acids or any other types of fatty acids are much better able to support brain function and brain longevity because they're able to make their way more efficiently out of the blood and have access to those brain cells where they can help to give us those benefits that we're looking for. Any supplement or nutrient that you're thinking of using to help improve your brain function, the very first important question to ask is, does this cross the blood-brain barrier? And so using nanoparticles, we're able to help fatty acids cross the blood-brain barrier more easily, and that gives them that ability to provide benefits. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at knowledge at and as always, we're wishing you great brain health.